Okay, June 9th, uh, June 9th, 1886, uh, President Grover Cleveland um, submits a treaty to Congress. Um, this was an extradition treaty with Japan. The government of Japan had already approved it. So what this allowed was if there was a Japanese citizen in the United States that committed a crime, he could no longer just escape back to Japan and escape prosecution. Um, this started with, um, what kind of kicked this off was there was a forger in San Francisco. And when he was kind of caught out and was uh, kind of on the run, he just went back to Japan. And so the U.S. government requested that the Japanese return him so he could be prosecuted, which they did. Um, but there was still no formal treaty, nothing, nothing formal in the place that would kind of make that happen on a regular basis. So um, that was, and, and Cleveland had been kind of trying to tighten down on our immigration policies in his first term. Uh, his, his successor, Benjamin Harrison, continued the process, opening up Ellis Island and just, again, trying to strengthen and put laws in place as to what, who could immigrate, what the immigration rules were. And then Grover Cleveland, when he came back for his second term after Harrison, then he, he again continued to try and just clarify and tighten their immigration laws. Um, so there's a big influx um, from China and Japan coming into the western United States and from Europe coming into the eastern United States. So it really was kind of that time where they said, okay, we need, really need to have some, some structure around this. So that's what I have for today. Um, in 1886, President Grover Cleveland goes to Congress and requests an extradition treaty with Japan. I will see you tomorrow.